This tutorial will help you get started with Survey123 for ArcGIS. We are going to learn how to create our own questionnaires or forms. For that, we will use spreadsheets and the XLS form specification along with Survey123 Connect. Then we are going to use the Survey123 for ArcGIS mobile app, so you can see how you can download surveys into your phone and collect data from the field. Finally, we will see how all the data you collect in Survey123 is automatically persisted in ArcGIS, so you can use the power of geography to make the best decisions. To start your work with Survey123, you need an ArcGIS account. If you don't have one, you can create a trial account here. Let's sign in. This is going to open the gallery of surveys, which in your case will be empty because it will be the first time you log in into the website. Click on the Create New button to publish your own surveys. Today we are going to use Survey123 Connect. This is a desktop application. It runs on Windows, Mac or Linux. Simply download this application and install it on your laptop. Survey123 Connect will help you author your own surveys. For that, you will use spreadsheets and the XLS form specification. Once you are happy with the results, with a single click, you will be able to publish your surveys into the Survey123 website. Now, before you start authoring your own surveys, I strongly recommend that you click in this link to learn a little bit about the XLS form specification. It's really not rocket science, but you will learn very quickly that it's a really powerful way to author your own surveys and govern their behavior. This is Survey123 Connect running on my own Windows box. Just so we don't get lost, I will start and create a new survey absolutely from scratch. Give it a name and then select the blank spreadsheet. This is going to basically open Microsoft Office, Excel, so you can author your own surveys right away. You will see a bunch of columns in here, but for now we only worry about these three, the type, the name and the label. In the label, you will type the questions that will be presented to users. For example, what is your name? What is your age? Do you like sports? What sports do you like? And maybe, where do you live? For each of these questions, you need to decide in which field in the database you want to persist the information. Those are the names that I'm typing right now. Finally, the type defines the type of question or answer that you expect from this question. So what's your name will be text. What's your age will be an integer. Do you like sports? Will be a select one because you want people to select an option from a list. And this list will have a name. In this case, yes underscore no. The lists are actually defined in the choices worksheet. You can see them here. I have a yes underscore no list with two options, yes and no. The label defines the string that will be exposed in the choices list to the user. And the name simply specifies the value that will be persisted in the database. For the what sports do you like question, I'm going to use the select multiple type of question. So here I'm going to again define a list name, in this case, sports. Now, because the sports list doesn't exist, I can actually create it. So here I'll provide the options for the user. And finally, in this column, I will put the actual values that I want to persist in the database, which actually could be integers if I liked, but in this case, I'm going to use just the strings. Now I have the list, and the list will be used by this particular question. Finally, the where do you live question expects a geo point as a response. Now, if you save your file and you now go back to connect, you will see that connect is actually rendering your survey. So we have the question, what's your name, what's your age, the options, uh, the multiple select, and the uh, geolocation question. Now let's 
do this uh, a bit more uh, let's build a more sophisticated survey here so for example uh, some of the sports you may like are not in this list so we can say I want to use a select multiple sports or other now I save and connect will actually refresh your survey and now we have the other option so you can specify a free text uh, next um, you may want to hide the what sports do you like question if the answer to do you like sports is not this is done through the relevant column which you will find on the right relevant there you go this column helps you define expressions that control when a particular question is relevant for example when is this particular question relevant well only when the answer to likes the sports is equal to yes so now we save connect will refresh and if you like a sports we ask you what sports do you like otherwise we hide the question that's pretty cool there are so many things you can do here for example you can use uh, hints um, you can use constraints constraints say what's your age must be greater than 17 or otherwise the constraint message will be you must be older than 17 I may want to flag a question as required such as the name uh, I could set uh, default values um, and many other things now the thing is how do you learn about the syntax and the things that you can do here well this is all controlled by the XLS form specification which uh, we saw before so if you come here you can learn about all of type all the question types how to build uh, relevant expressions and formulas and so much now <coughs> if you look carefully at this website you will see that some uh, options or some sections are highlighted in yellow and green that indicates that these particular portions of the spec are not yet implemented by Sutri 123 we are working to implement it all but in this page you can see what is implemented uh, so far obviously you will see this page changing as we implement more and more things now once you are happy with your survey you can actually uh, sign in using your ArcGIS credentials and simply click this button to publish it to your own ArcGIS organization you have some options for publishing and this is basically going to parse your Excel file understand the validation logic and all of that and create everything you need in ArcGIS to have a survey that can be downloaded into your app now that the survey has been completed you can go back into the survey gallery refresh your browser and now you will see boom, test the survey you created um, this is empty and uh, nobody has access to it you can go into the share option and share this survey with members of your ArcGIS organization the purpose of doing this is so they can actually go download the survey123 application and uh, collect data in the field this is my Android phone I'm looking at the Google Play Store in which I'm going to search for survey123 just uh, go into the app it's roughly 15 megabytes install it and the first thing you will see is that you will need to provide your credentials so just uh, sign in and at this moment this is going to present all of the surveys that have been shared with your account I'm downloading test which is the one that we just authored and I can start collecting data immediately so the same questions that we saw in survey 123 connect are now presented to me and I can just go ahead and answer all of the questions uh, the location is going to automatically capture where you are but you can at any moment move the pin and select a different coordinate if you want to change the base map you can actually do it you can see the list of base maps that are supported actually in survey 123 connect if you look carefully you'll see that you can define the default base map the default extent and many other things when you are happy you click on the bottom right corner 
and you can either keep this survey in your device to send it later, maybe when you are in Wi-Fi, or you can click on send now. This will send the survey right away and it will go into the send uh, box. You can keep collecting data here or you could actually go back to the gallery and maybe download other surveys that you may have uh, authored. Uh, it's pretty much that simple. Now back in survey 1, 2, 3 in the website, uh, in the survey you'll be able to go into view results and see <coughs> all of the data that has been collected. So those are the two points that I collected before with all of the questions that I typed in. It's uh, that simple. Actually now that the data is in ArcGIS, if you would like to open this data within ArcGIS, you could simply click on that link that I pushed, sign in, and use your feature service, in this case from ArcGIS.com, but you could also use it uh, in ArcGIS Pro, in Operations Dashboard, basically in any ArcGIS application. So back on my phone, I just want to show you a handful of surveys so you can see the type of things that you can do. This is a survey uh, for Ebola. It has some options here to select. This is a select uh, multiple, but you can tell that the arrangement of the options is horizontal. This is controlled through the appearance, uh, appearance uh, column uh, versus these lists here select ones which are arranged vertically. You can see a relevant here, okay, only the date of uh, death is only asked if you are actually, if the, the patient is actually dead. Uh, the same with the patient occupation, if it is other than healthcare worker, I'm going to ask you what is your occupation. Uh, let's get out of here and uh, maybe try the wolf survey. I like this one because it uh, uses a styling in surveys. So it's using this high contrast style and also is using media to help you make the right calls while in the field. Uh, in the blog of survey 123 we have a, a post that describes how you can actually control the styling of your surveys to achieve these, these uh, effects. And finally, this one is also interesting because in this survey it also uses media to help you identify the birds before you actually decide which bird did you see. And even on the side, we have these blue buttons which allow you to play sounds. All of these things are controlled from the survey. They are part of the XLS form specification. So. It's just a matter of you reading a little bit and understanding how to do these things. It's not rocket science and it's also documented in our blog. Now you might be wondering where is that blog? So if you scroll down at the bottom of the Survey123 website, you can get here to the blog. So that's pretty much it. This is the post describing how to do the, the styling. And we will post more information here so you can learn tricks and tricks with Survey123. The last point I want to make regards with the um, public repo that we have. If you click on Issue Tracker, here is going to take you to the public repo where you can submit issues. I'm sure you will find many. You may have enhancements or just things that don't work. Report them here. We'll take care of them. We actually look pretty often to this website and we try to be reactive. So help us get uh, Survey123 better by participating in that um, repo. Thank you. I hope this was useful. Play a little bit, learn and uh, enjoy.